Hello YouTube, my name is Noble705 and today I have got a bit of an off-brand YouTube video compared to the rest of the videos that I have on my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to properly add either Omnisphere or Keyscape into your DAW of choice but uh, for the purposes of this video, it's going to be FL Studio version 20. I was searching around YouTube when I first tried doing this and I couldn't find an adequate video. So I figured why not do it myself in a clear, concise and quick manner so that all of you guys can do this and go on about your day and, you know, start producing your own beats. So it's super simple. Um, I should preface again, this is obviously on Windows. I don't own a Mac, so if you do, I would assume this the process is in pretty much the exact same, but I'm not sure how the Mac OS interface works, so I, I'm not really of help to you if you are on that system, I'm sorry. And this is also, this video is also assuming that you have already gone through the process of downloading the installer for either Keyscape or Omnisphere, and you have already downloaded the program onto your desktop, your external drive, whatever it may be. So you have done that already, and you are at the point where you just want to import it into your uh, DAW, but you just can't figure it out. So this is for you. So all you're going to do is you're going to go here, and you'll see that I'm on my Windows C drive. You're gonna come up to the top right here and there's this arrow that you click or you can press Control F1 to also do the same thing. You're gonna go up here to view, click that and check hidden items. And you'll see a couple things pop up here, but what you wanna focus on mainly is program data. So you're gonna click on that. You're gonna find your Spectrasonics folder here and you'll notice if you have gone into the other file, it looks the exact same. And by other file, I mean the one that you can view without having to click hidden items. So it looks the exact same, but within this, if you click on plugins and you go to 64-bit, you'll notice that keyscape.dll is right here. And so what you're going to go do from here is now that you've found your file path, right? You're going to minimize this. You go back into FL Studio. You go click on add and on the bottom right here, click manage plugins. From here, you'll notice that all of the plugins that come standard with FL Studio 20 are listed within here. And you'll notice on the left here are some file pathways uh, for those plugins. Now you won't see this uh, because what we're gonna do next is actually add this into this uh, screen here. Let me drag this to the middle. So all you're gonna do, it's really simple. Click this file icon, you're going to go to Windows C Drive, Program Data, scroll down to Spectrasonics, and just select folder. I'm not going to do it here because I don't need to add another instance of Keyscape into my uh, FL Studio, um, but that's literally all you got to do is just select the folder, um, and then you're going to go to find more plugins. And as you can see, it's just going to scan, scan, scan. Um, but what it's doing is it's going through that file there and just scrounging around looking for that little .dll file. Um, and once you're done with the scan, you can just scroll to the bottom and Keyscape will be right there. And then after that, after you've done that, you can close this. You can go into your channel rack, go to replace and find your Keyscape, which for me here is at the bottom. Keyscape will open, and for you, it will look different um, because mine is already unlocked. Basically, what you will see right now, or what you should see, is something that it has given you a challenge code, a box for a response code, and I believe it gives you a, um, a link to click or something that sends you an email to your email that's registered with a Spectrasonics account. 
you'll go into your email, you'll see that that email actually has a link that leads you to the Spectrasonics webpage. However, this webpage will have a box for the challenge code that was given to you on this screen here. And then it will ask you to input some uh, information about the computer that you're using, just some specs. Uh, it's nothing crazy. You can find it going through your settings uh, if you don't know them off your hand. And then uh, you'll input that challenge code in. You'll enter those specs. You'll click submit. A response code will be generated and you will just copy and paste that response code into here, into this screen. And then there's a button that just says submit or something like that. Uh, I can't quite remember exactly, but it's really straightforward. You just click it and then you get to this screen here. And mine obviously isn't updated. I haven't done it yet, but you can click on it and you should have your sounds ready to go. Uh, no problem whatsoever. And, uh, and that's, that's literally it. No other steps other than that. That's it. So again, this video, I hope it helped you guys. I'm assuming it did. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you have any issues, just put it in the comments and I'll try to help you to my best of my ability. Um, and other than that, guys, if, if this did help you, I would just please ask that you like the video so that others that are in the same position as you and I was a couple weeks ago were in. Um, can get some help. And uh, if you're feeling generous, subscribe. And if not, that's okay. I will see you guys another day. All right. See you later.